there, are you looking for some baby sleep tips or a quick tip to help your baby sleep? If so, you want to stick around for this video as we dive into baby sleep. Hi there, I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm a chiropractor by training, but I found my passion empowering parents to teach their little ones to sleep and parent confidently day and night as a sleep consultant. And I'm the creator and the founder of the Helping Babies Sleep Method. And that's what I want to talk to you about today methodology because I receive hundreds of questions asking for baby sleep tips. And here's the thing, guys, we're going to go through the pillars of the helping baby sleep method to help you understand that sleep is more than just a quick tip to solve your problems. In the helping baby sleep book, which is available on Amazon, by the way, we have five pillars and I want to go through each of those so that I can educate you on why your baby struggles with sleep and what you need to do to help them sleep through the night again. Okay. So the first pillar is really understanding that while the drive to sleep is biological, the way we sleep is a learned habit. Okay, we think sleep should be this beautiful, natural, and instinctual thing. Right in those first couple of weeks of life, yes it is. All they seem to do is eat, wake up, poop, and go back to sleep. But the drive to sleep, while it is, is biological, we all have a need to sleep, the way we sleep is actually a learned habit. And that learning, happens often inadvertently for many of us in those first four to eight weeks of age, right? And you know, if you're past that stage, don't worry because you can still learn to sleep later on, but that's usually when it's imprinted, okay? And then after four months of age, when kids are capable of self-soothing, that's when a lot of parents work on sleep training, which if you follow me at all, you know that that's a term that I hate because we, we train our pets, but we teach our children. And when you understand that sleep is a learned habit, it all makes that much more sense. Think about yourself. You know, if I said to you tonight, you can't sleep in your favorite position and I'm taking away your pillow, you would be very uncomfortable. But you would you would toss and turn and you would learn a new way of falling asleep. Okay, sleep is a learned habit. And often sleep training or sleep teaching should actually be called sleep reteaching because you already taught them to fall asleep a certain way. Often it's in arms, rocking at the breast, at the bottle, something like that. And you have to undo that if, if sleep isn't going away. The second pillar of the helping baby sleep method is timing. The idea that all of our little ones have ideal timing to be put down based on their month of age. And this is based on what we call awake times. And awake times are based on a physiological process. So as we exist, as your babies metabolize, have respiration, circulation, all that great stuff, they're breaking down a fuel, um, ATP molecule for fuel, and one of the byproducts of that is a protein called adenosine. And that, that protein builds up and then it signals your brain that it's time to sleep. That's your sleep drive, sleep pressure, and it's what your awake times are based on by month. And that is important because putting your baby down too early when that sleep pressure isn't high or too late when they're overtired can make it harder for your little one to fall asleep and then stay asleep. So pillar two is all about timing. The third pillar of the helping baby sleep method is being an intentional feeder day and night. So when I was going through this, I was really very much into attachment parenting, trying to follow baby's cues and feed them on demand and whatnot. And that just didn't end up working out for us. And if it works, if it works for you, amazing, right? But if you're having trouble with sleep, you might have to look at the way you're feeding your baby and being a more intentional feeder using food for fuel rather than to soothe, soothe them to sleep because we know that all humans wake up in the night, okay? But now that you know that sleep's a learned habit, if your child needs that to fall asleep, they're gonna need that repeatedly in the night to go back to sleep, so intentional feeding. The fourth pillar of the helping baby sleep method is messaging and being consistent. So this is the purpose of bedtime routines, to cue their little brains that sleep is coming and so they understand what happens next. So doing the thing, same messaging and routines consistently over and over, again, helps your baby learn. Right? How do you learn? Repetition, same outcome from the same stimulus over and over again. And then the fifth pillar of the helping baby sleep method is really what people think about when they think about sleep teaching. It's responding. So responding. If I take away the known way of falling asleep for my little person, if I decide I just cannot nurse you to sleep one more time, I'm going to take that away. How are you going to offer comfort to the tears that will manifest when you do that? Because if you are used to nursing your little one to sleep and you put them down, you can imagine that they will cry because that's their only way of communicating with you. And they're saying, I'm tired. Why are you making this harder for me? Where's that move that I know when that's easy and comfortable for me? So responding is the fifth pillar of the helping baby sleep method. And in our books, it's on Amazon. We talk about the two different methods that we like to use. So 
I'd love to go as gently as possible. And gently as possible would look like having you in the room closer to little one, offering them physical and verbal reassurance after you've worked on the other four pillars already, right? Because one place a lot of parents go wrong is they just decide, I can't take this anymore in the middle of the night, I'm gonna let them cry. And why that doesn't work for a lot of people is that it's very difficult for your child to learn something new, a new way of falling asleep in the middle of the night. That can be very hard. In addition, it's not great for you. You're tired, you're often cold at that time of night, and you don't have a plan or a roadmap to success. And that's what we've tried to lay out for you in the Helping Baby Sleep Method, right? No, understanding how the pillars all play into things to help you set you and your little one up for success at bedtime, the night waking, and then naps the next day. And yes, we do, the, do them in that order, all in sequence. Naps are harder because the drive to sleep is usually a bit less than it is at nighttime. And the circadian rhythm which regulates naps doesn't fully mature until closer to six months. Doesn't mean that you can't have good naps. It means that naps from child to child won't be um, very consistent until around six months of age, okay? So if you're looking for a baby, you know, quick tip, the first quick tip would be looking at the timing of sleep and making sure that you're not keeping them up awake too long or too, or putting them down too early for their age group. Understanding that sleep is a learned habit. So it will take time to undo a learned habit. So a quick tip isn't gonna be the thing that helps your child sleep through the night, right? Working on intentional feeding. So if you're offer, if the, if the bottle or the breast is positioned as comfort or or a cure for boredom. A lot of people underestimate how cranky little ones can be when they're bored. You will continue to stay stuck in what I've termed the snacking cycle. Small, frequent meals throughout the day and then at night. And then the fourth pillar is messaging and being consistent and being able to, you know, communicate it's time for sleeping and then follow through on that over and over again. And then the fifth pillar is responding, using your, your presence and your verbal and physical reassurance to help them fall asleep. Or maybe you need to be further away from them because for some kids being so close to them might drive them nuts that you're not picking them up. But that depends on their age and what your previous sleeping arrangements were. And that's something that we go through, help you determine in the Helping Baby Sleep Method. So we're on Amazon. Please feel free to go check out your copy. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a baby sleep tip. And we look forward to seeing you next time.